Hey everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community on the planet. Today's Thursday, August 17th. Hope you're well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the stock Canopy Growth. There was some news today. They'll be selling their Hershey facility back to Hershey Canada for $53 million. Also got an update and an interview with CEO David Klein. He gives an update on BioSteel and U.S. legalization. Got all that more. Stock was up about 7%, a little over, and then a few percent after hours. But going to discuss all that more. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Also, make sure to follow Pow Group on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at Group Pow. So again, follow at Group Pow on X. I'll be using that as my platform of choice going forward. Also, a quick word from our sponsor of this video. The company is called My Size. They are a provider of AI-driven solutions for fashion and retail that drive revenue growth and reduce costs for its business clients and an omni-channel e-commerce company. Ticker symbol is MYSZ on the NASDAQ. But again, this isn't financial advice. You can do your own research. This is for entertainment purposes only. And again, I'll never tell you to buy, sell, or hold, but they're looking to disrupt a $38 billion market. So you can check that out if you feel so inclined. If you recall, I did do a video on Canopy Growth. This was back about a month ago on July 5th. There was a downgrade of $0, and I discussed the possibility of whether or not could Canopy Growth go bankrupt, right? Using that, the B word. But again, in this video, I discussed that I didn't think that that was the most likely scenario. They had too many brands, too many assets. And then obviously with this news today, selling their facility back to Chocolatier Hershey for 53 million, this goes in line with what I was saying, right? They have a lot of brands, they have BioSteel, they have stores in Bickle, they have all these different brands, all these different assets and facilities. So to throw around the B word was a little premature in my opinion. Were they struggling? Definitely, but they are trying to right the ship. And then if you recall, back, I did a video on their earnings as well, but they reported for, for the 2024 uh, Q1, for Q1 2024 financials in that, in the highlights, you can see here the company continues to focus on simplifying its businesses and reducing cash burn. Currently reviewing strategic options for BioSteel, including a potential sale of the business in order to remove the cash burden. So again, they're trying their asset light model. They're trying to execute on that. And we know that they got out of the retail space as well. Um, but again, this, in my opinion, is what kind of overshadowed some of those. They, they had great results for the quarter, but again, that kind of overshadowed it. I think a lot of people were we're pretty upset about that. Uh, but again, I get an update here a little bit later on in the video. But here's the article, Canopy selling MJ facility back to Chocolatier Hershey for 53 million. So we'll go through a little bit quicker here. Sale of Smith Falls, Ontario is part of Canopy's drive to shed costs and transition to an asset light model for the struggling company. But it's also symbolic of Canada's faltering MJ industry, which has sustained more than 20 billion in losses. Canopy, which is set which has yet to record a profit, has lost almost $6 billion since becoming the first MJ company to go public in 2014, when it was known as Tweed MJ. Back in February, Canopy planned to shutter the Smith Falls facility and lay off 800 workers to save money. The facility has a rich history and has undergone a major transformation over the past 15 years. Hershey stopped producing chocolate in Smith Falls in 2008, leaving the plant empty for years. And then in 2013, Tweed Hershey Drive a company affiliated with Canopy Growth bought the plant from Icon International, a specialized finance company in Canada and the United States, according to local media at the time. This is the latest milestone in our focused effort to reduce costs and further enhance our balance sheet, said CEO David Klein of Canopy and of the facility sale back to Hershey. Once again, we have demonstrated Canopy Growth's ability to achieve significant organizational and operational change to position the company for future growth in the Canadian market. In announcing the pending sale Thursday, Canopy said it will retain its Smith Falls-based post-harvest manufacturing facility. Canopy plans to centralize its post-harvest manufacturing at its former beverage facility in Smith Falls. In addition, the company is moving its head office across the street. The former beverage facility has been retrofitted to support both harvest manufacturing and office functions. For almost three years, Klein has been unwinding many of Canopy's decisions, and the Hershey facility sale is the latest example. This year alone... Canopy has grossed roughly $155 million from the sale of seven properties, the company said in its release. The foundation for Canopy's losses were largely laid by former executives who aggressively expanded the business across Canada and around the world. The problem was the company and the industry overshot production capacity and overestimated demand for MJ products. In 2017, before adult-use MJ was legal, Canada... 
Canada's licensed producers had bankrolled more than enough production capacity to meet demand for recreational MJ. But companies kept building and buying, and by 2021, Canadian MJ businesses had sold less than 20% of the MJ they had produced, a major factor in the industry's mounting losses. Canopy, for its part, bought large greenhouses in Canada and overseas, in Colombia, Denmark, in an in uh, Africa as well. Unwinding those purchases, which started in tw- late 2019, has affected thousands of workers. In 2020, Canopy said it was ceasing some cultivation in Africa, Canada, and Colombia, and the United States to improve efficiencies in global operations. Months later, Canopy shuttered more facilities across Canada to save money, and Canopy also unloaded greenhouses in BC, British Columbia, which it once touted as the largest MJ greenhouses in the world. But again, stock was up a little over 7% today after hours. And I do want to play this video, a couple parts of the video uh, with uh, CEO David Klein. But I do want to give an update here. So this project is a strategic acquisition and is another step in our continuing investment in our supply chain network to enable our leading snacking powerhouse vision, said Todd Scott, a spokesman for HersheyCo, in an email. The facility provides us with the flexibility to support growth across the consumer goods portfolio. It is too premature to discuss potential hiring plans and what the company could produce at that 700,000 square foot facility it sold in 2007, he added. Meanwhile, David Klein, Canopy's chief executive officer, said he was pleased with the deal, which he described as an important sale. This is the latest milestone in our focused effort to reduce costs and further enhance our balance sheet, he said in a statement. Net proceeds of the sale of the Hershey building will be used primarily to pay down Canopy's senior secured credit facility. In Canopy's latest quarter, it recorded almost 42 million net loss compared to a net loss of roughly 2.1 billion a year ago. When Canopy acquired one Hershey Drive, the pot market was in growth mode rather than cutting mode with federal MJ legalization on its way. It purchased the building for 6.6 million, including 923,980 in shares. 923,980 shares from a group of investors, including one-time Canopy Chief Executive Officer Bruce Linton and Guy Samuel Company. As part of, as part owner of the facility before the transaction, Bruce Linton received 70,800 of the 94,397,000 shares issued. The shares were subject to a four-month lockup period. When the Hershey deal is complete, Canopy will complete post-production flower activity across the street from one Hersey Drive at 99 Lawrence Street, where it already has a regional distribution center, bottling facility, and beverage capabilities. So I'll play the video here and quick update on BioSteel from David Klein. Is a sports drink and protein powder business, BioSteel. BioSteel delivered huge sales growth, but was also responsible for 60% of the losses this quarter. Let's bring in David Klein, who's the CEO of Canopy Growth. David, thank you so much for being with us. Um, It's hard to maneuver around this thing that is BioSteel. It's delivering such tremendous sales growth, but is is losing you money. Um, How does that happen? Yeah, so so to, to build um, a CPG brand like BioSteel takes investment in cash and investment through our PL. And so uh, when we when we when we look at our business and we want to be focused on cannabis, uh, we've we've said that we're going to review all of our options to eliminate the drag caused by BioSteel uh, from a cash flow and uh, and an earnings perspective. Because our cannabis business, as you mentioned, we you know we've We've uh, restructured the business. We focused on an asset light model, uh, and it's 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 working. We're seeing uh, improved uh, performance from a profitability standpoint across our business. Every single one of our business units grew sequentially quarter over quarter, and so that part of our our, our business is working. And we need to. Um, stay focused on that uh, as as we go forward. Even as you say it's working, and I'll quote from a report. So there you go. We get an update on that. And again, it it goes to show that Canopy, it's more than just MJ, but they continue to focus their, they continue to reiterate their focus is on MJ, but BioSteel being a great brand, it's official partner and hydration partner of the NHL and the NHL Players Association. Um, So we'll see what happens with that. Um, I'm surprised they haven't done any kind of like CPD, CBD infused uh, with those biosteel brands, but that's something that could potentially happen in the future, especially once federally permissible in the United States. And speaking of which, he did get an update on that as well. So we'll take a look at that piece of the interview. 
Ear to the ground. I only have 30 seconds left, but any sense on timing of uh, legislation in the United States? No, um, I, I, I've stopped guessing on that. Um, however, what I would say is with our with our U.S. structure, with brands like Wana and Jetty and Terrace and, and Acreage, um, we're not waiting for uh, legalization. And so, you know, those brands are continuing to grow while we're wait while the the U.S. government is kind of grinding through regulations. And you know, we we announced recently that Wana opened uh, in 45 locations in in Florida. So we're continuing to build our business while we wait. David. So not very optimistic on the US legalization and reform. Um, but again, I think everybody, you know, is kind of just sick and tired of sitting around and waiting. And again, we're not just companies just aren't just going to sit there and wait for the US to get their ducks in a row, right? They're going to continue to to work on aspects of their business that can drive growth and profitability, but also planning for that inevitable rollout in the US. But taking a look at the chart here, like I said, stock was up over 7% here uh, on the day today, and then a few percent after hours. And we could still see an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross as well. And MJ actually wasn't actually held up pretty good today in face of market weakness. So the broader market was weak today, uh, but looking for potential of an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross on the daily time frame for Canopy, which would mean a lot more upside. And we do have a potential for a weekly trend change here with the low, high, higher, low. So if we hold the low here at 34 cents and break resistance at 53 cents, we'll be back in a, in a weekly uptrend. And then if we zoom out to the monthly time frame, we'll start the monthly bounce at that point. And we are coming off monthly oversold as well. And from February 2021 highs and all-time highs down over 99%. So again, not financial advice, but this looks like you know a fairly a fairly decent trade if you you know if you're looking to invest you know maybe a thousand bucks, five thousand bucks, whatever your risk tolerance is. I think there is a lot of risk versus reward here, um, a lot more reward versus risk here. And like I said, if we go back to EMA 12 here, which We've done on Tilray, a lot of names are trending back to their monthly EMA 12. You take a look at Tilray, it's finding resistance rate at that EMA. So if CGC were to do something similar, from current price, that would bring us up to, that's about 450% of upside. And we have no nearby resistance on the price action until all the way up here at over 10X from here on the monthly time frame. So again, I think that Canopy is going to, to swim long term and Again, if we just do what Tilray and a lot of names are doing and backtesting their monthly EMA 12 coming off monthly oversold, again, if you know nothing about technical analysis and you just buy when we're close to oversold on the monthly and weekly time frame and sell when we're close to overbought on the monthly and weekly time frame, you do better than 99% of traders out there, right? And down over 99%, uh, what better time to be loading up for the long term? But again, there's definitely some risk here. But in my opinion, they have a lot of assets, a lot of, of you know, uh, brands and things like that, that they continue, that they could liquidate if needed and facilities, which we've seen for this news today as an example of that. But we are a little bit weaker here compared to a name like Tilray. Tilray, you can see here, we're well above the 10 week moving average and we're blasting off in terms of the stochastic and the MACD. So we are a little bit of a laggard here, but it could be a nice laggard play on CGC. But I'd like to see us close the week over 45 cents to remain bullish. And then in terms of the weekly moving averages, we have the we have some runway until the 50 weekly there at 197. And again, Tilray back testing its 50. So a lot of names are starting to do so. And if CGC were to do that, that would bring us back up to around that $2 mark. And we know that CGC is exploring the possibility of a reverse split after getting a, a NASDAQ warning, price warning. So that's more than likely going to happen. They could get an extension as well, but based on everything I've seen, I, I, I think that a reverse split is more than likely going to happen. Then we have the 200 day moving average up there at 183. And again, a lot of our names are starting to back test that 200 day moving average. You can see here, Tilray got above its 200 day, 200 day moving average, and we could see a golden cross with the 50 below the 200 and crossing. And again, CGC, if it were to get back to its 200 day moving average, that's around $1.83. But it's likely going to be many months before we see a golden cross on CGC. It's definitely not as strong as a name like Tilray. But like I said, market did respond well to this news. Let me know what you think of this news. Let me know what you think of the BioSteel update, accounting for about 60% of Canopy's losses. And then, uh, yeah, US reform, it's an inevitability. I know it's, it's a matter of when, not if. Um, but again, a lot of companies just showing their their frustration with 
you know, the lack of reform in the U.S. and false promises that we got. And we had that huge run up in February 2021 on hopes of U.S. legalization and the Dems taking control of the Senate. But it's just been empty promises. Right. So, again, companies not waiting on U.S. legalization, but definitely building the brands, building the, you know, the for the inevitability of that happening, but not relying on it. Right. So we have to keep in mind that it this is this is not you know, a sprint, this is a marathon, and we're looking for companies that are going to be here in three, five plus, you know, 10 years from now. And if we can find, you know, a few companies that are going to be here in ten, five, 10 plus years from now, that is going to be, you know, the, the game changer, right? That's going to be generational, potentially generational wealth for us and our families, right? Our children and our children's children. But going into there is Rob with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you on the next video.